Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Zahira Vellani and I lead engineering for data management at Tableau. So this includes Tableau Prep and Tableau Catalog. Earlier today in the keynote, you saw some of the features that my team is building, including Prep Web Authoring, Write to Database for Prep, and of course, Tableau Catalog. There is more to come in devs on stage to tomorrow, so make sure that you attend. Today, it is my honor to introduce to you five-time Tableau Zen Master, Joshua Milligan. So Joshua was one of the first, one of the early participants in the Tableau Prep beta program. And so a lot of the features that you see in Tableau Prep have been heavily influenced by his feedback. Thank you, Joshua. He is also in 2017, he was one of three Iron Viz finalists and he competed here in Las Vegas on the big stage. And he is also author of the book, Learning Tableau. So today, he is here to take us to the final frontier. He will explore new and exciting features and boldly go where no data customer has gone before. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch. But we will learn about Star Trek too. So please join me in welcoming Joshua to the stage. So before I go, I have one quick question for you. Who do you think would use Tableau Prep more, Captain Kirk or Captain Picard? Ooh, that, I'll, I'll answer that one at the end when we get to Q&A. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that warm and kind introduction. So who's having fun at this Star Trek convention? <laughs> oh, not that data, I, I see. All right, so I just had an introduction. I won't spend a long time uh, talking about myself, other than to mention that I am a principal consultant at Technion Data Solutions, which is a gold partner with Tableau. And so my job day in and day out is helping customers with Tableau and Tableau Prep. So I get to solve real problems for real people, and I have a blast doing it. Uh, all of my contact information is there. Uh, in addition to the honor and, and humility that being a Zen Master brings, uh, I also get a rock, so that's, that's great. Uh, Zahira mentioned my book, uh, so that's a picture of it. This also is an incredibly important part of my life, these four children. Uh, this picture was taken a year ago, so the baby is now a year old and about this close to walking. Uh, the two-year-old is now three and about this close to using the restroom. And the other two are a year older as well. Now, my wife saw this slide and said, what, no picture of me? And I said, well, would you like me to include a picture of you? She said, no. When I was the age of, of the older two children there, I grew up watching reruns of Star Trek, uh, the original series. And to me, they weren't reruns. To me, it was all brand new, and it was exciting, and there was a sense of wonder. Every week, a new alien, a new life form to discover, and uh, it just was a lot of fun. Now that I've grown up, I still love Star Trek, but I also love Tableau, and I feel that same sense of wonder as I use Tableau to explore strange new data sets, and also every time that Tableau releases a new version or a new feature, I feel that, that sense of wonder and awe as I explore those features and find new capabilities that I can use. In fact, if there was a television series uh, based on Tableau, I think it would open Something like this. Tableau, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the data analyst. The ongoing mission to seek out new features and new functionality. To boldly go where no analyst has gone before.
So I love exploring new releases of Tableau and Tableau Prep. Today what we're gonna do is we're going to look at these new releases and some of the new features that have come out, and here's, here's how we'll do it. We'll start by talking about how do you find out about these new features? Tableau is releasing a new version of desktop every quarter, minor releases even more often than that. Tableau Prep is on a monthly release cycle. How can you keep up with it? So we'll talk about that. Then we'll take a look at several new features. There's no way we can be comprehensive, but we'll look at a few that I think are incredibly exciting. And finally, we'll wrap up by talking about what to do with these things that we discover. Let's start by finding new features. There are a few ways that, uh, that you might acquaint yourself with some of the new features as they come out. One of the uh, most important ways, and don't worry about capturing every URL, I'll, uh, I'll put it on, on my blog, I'll put these slides and you can, you can get it, but the new features page is definitely one to check out. Every time there's a new release, you can go here to see what's new. There's screenshots, descriptions, and it's a great way to get an overview of many of the new features Although I have discovered that there are some that slip through, and I'll find them as I use the, uh, the actual release. Release notes. How many of you have ever looked at release notes? All right, that's wonderful. So quite a few, more than I expected. Uh, but I love looking at these because Tableau for every product, whether it's prep, server, online, bridge, uh, and then the new ones, Tableau Catalog, uh, they all have the capability to, uh, to select it and then to look at each release and each, each minor release, uh, and you can see what bugs were fixed, what features were added, uh, what changed in this version. And so it's a great way, uh, especially, I I'll reference these because I need to know when I'm working with clients who are on a couple of versions uh, prior to the most recent, what did it have? Uh, now, if you think that sounds boring, you need to be more like Scotty. Check out the release notes. Also, this is a great program, the pre-release program. How many of you have participated in the pre-release program? All right, so not quite as many, but still a few. This is open to Tableau customers. If you go to prerelease.tableau.com, you can sign up, and then you'll be invited to look at versions which are in development. Uh, they may be beta versions. They may be uh, a preview version. And, and so lots of incredible things that you can look at there and then give feedback to the developers to let them know what features work, what features don't work, what do you wish it could do that it doesn't currently and that feedback helps those developers as they build out the product. And the community forums. How many of you have posted questions on the community forums? That's how I got started with the forums, asking questions and then getting answers from Zen Masters and from others in the community who knew how to uh, solve some of my problems. But the community forums also have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, information there about new releases. There's release news. Tableau Prep has an email list uh, you can sign up for uh, to get a communication about new releases there. Other ways. So social media is a great way. Uh, build up a, a, uh, a, a, f uh, a group of people that you follow on Twitter. Uh, that was one way that I discovered a new feature, uh, Kent Martin. Uh, who is instrumental in the geospatial features of Tableau, he tweeted out and he said, did you know that you could use this new feature to join uh, data sources geospatially, even if it's not a spatial data source? I didn't know that, but I found out about it, I learned about it, and I blogged about it. So there are plenty of blogs out there, people who are using these new features, so check those out. And finally, download the latest version and start exploring it. Now, how many of you at your organization, you're a, f you're a version or two behind? Most of you. I figured that. So I hear all the time this concern that, wow, how do I keep up? Because my organization is still on 
And uh, how do I know what the new features are gonna be? Well, I've got an answer for you. In fact, Tableau has an answer for you. This is the official uh, statement from Tableau regarding licenses. Now always check with your Tableau rep, but the question is, can I, use, can I install Tableau Desktop on more than one machine? And the answer is yes, which means you have it on your work computer, but you can also use that same license for your home computer, and there's no requirement saying that that can't be the latest version. So you can be exploring the new features at home and then showing off to your colleagues at work and making fun of them for not having it. But they could get it too. Let's explore some features. This is the fun part. We'll do so with some uh, scenarios, although not the no-win kind. All right, who's ready to see the first new feature? Who's excited? Animation. This one is currently in pre-release, and so I think you may see a little bit more tomorrow. Definitely Devs on Stage is another way to, uh, to find out new features that are coming down the road. Imagine, for example, that you had a fleet of starships, and you wanted to see the correlation of phaser recharge rate versus shield efficiency, and you wanted to look at it over time, so over multiple star dates. Now, I know when you go to evaluate this uh, session, it's gonna have a question on there about how relevant was this to you. First of all, Star Trek is always relevant, but if it helps you to think of this in terms of employee efficiency versus sales or uh, profit ratios, you can imagine that. This is not animation. This is a scatter plot that as I change the filter, the circles are, are, are just appearing at different, uh, different places. So I've animated it here in the PowerPoint, but this is not truly animation. Uh, as you look at this, uh, it's, it's helpful, and this is the way that Tableau has always worked, uh, but you lose something. It's not as easy to see where the, uh, where the point was or how far it moved. Now there are some ways that you might compensate for that using, using certain visualization types, uh, but imagine if you could have a visualization like this. Now I can actually see the movement as the star date changes, I can tell where the starship was and where it moved to. How far did it move? Not only this, but this feature allows for an incredible world of storytelling possibilities. Because I can animate this and actually narrate it as I go along. So I could tell you about the battle with the Klingons and how that drained the shields on that star date and then then they recharged it and, you know, or you could think of employees and, uh, and profit ratios if you wanted to. And it doesn't just work for scatter plots. Imagine other visualization types. Here's a shield recharge rate uh, with various options. Notice that the animation allows you to see the shape of the line as it changes. So you're not just seeing this line, and then another line, and then another line, it allows you to cognitively understand how things are changing. And this feature is just one of those features that, there are some features that are, that are really nice to have and just make life easier. And then there are features which are complete game changers. This one is both. This one, it makes life easier, just cognitively, I can understand the data better, and I don't even have to do anything, but it also is a game changer in the way that I can tell stories. All right, who wants to see it, not just in Tableau, but actually in action? All right, let's do it. Let's do it with this data set. I've got a, a data set here of on-screen Star Trek deaths. I've got the, uh, the name and the position of the person who died, which season, which episode, uh, their shirt color. And so I'm, I'm a little bit interested in that, standing up here in a yellow uniform, and the cause of death. 
How many of you have seen a bar chart race? All right, I looked it up on YouTube, and now my YouTube channel is full of these things. You actually see the bars as they grow. Maybe it's like the most popular operating system, and, and you see the bars move around and, uh, over time. Let's build one in Tableau, but not operating systems, not world population. Let's use Star Trek deaths. On-screen deaths by uniform color, and let's build it. The only thing I've done here is just some formatting up front to save some time, but other than that, we'll build this from scratch. I'm gonna start with uh, the, uh, the title of the episode, and I'm gonna place that on Pages. So Pages has allowed what we've called animation up to this point, but now it's fully integrated with this new feature, and so it's gonna be really cool to watch. And that allows me to step through page by page, and you can see the title then changes to, uh, to give me the season and episode number and the title. So we'll back up here. And then I want, to, I want to look at this as a bar chart, so I'll put the running number of deaths on there. And then I, uh, I want to further break that down by shirt color. And I'll place that on color. And you saw a little bit of animation there, but we'll see more in a little bit. Now for a normal bar chart, I would take the shirt color and place it on rows. But because I'm using pages, and I want the bars to reorder, the way I'm gonna do that is by creating a, a quick ad hoc calculation here using a unique rank. So rank unique of the sum of the running number of deaths. And then a couple of things with that. First, I'm going to compute using the shirt color so that it's the number of deaths per shirt color. And then I'm going to make it discrete so that it gives me headers here on the side uh, instead of being a continuous field. I'll hide the nulls, we don't need to see those. You can see, even as I'm changing the, the viz, it's got some animation built into it. We'll, uh, we'll hide the, uh, the headers, don't need to see those. And then we'll go to uh, presentation mode and watch our race. It turns out I had nothing to be nervous about as long as I appeared in the third season. <laughs> so animation is going to be an incredible feature when it's out, currently in pre-release, uh, and I'm excited to see it because it will change everything. Let's take a look at a few other features, these in Tableau Prep. Tableau Prep comes out monthly and there are lots of new features to consider. I'm not even going to touch Tableau Prep Conductor today or any of the data governance, uh, but you saw some of that and I think you'll see more. Here are some of the features that we will talk about. Connecting to cloud files. 
uh, 2019.4 beta R in Python scripts, so 2019.3, level of detail calcs, officially in the 2019.4 beta, but if you're using 2019.3, they're there. They just weren't talked about. And Tableau comes out with new versions so often that by the time I had this presentation put together, it's no longer beta, it's actually released, 2019.4. So let's say I had a data set like this. Every episode of the original series of Star Trek, along with every actor who appeared in that episode and the character that they played. There are some questions that I might start to ask myself as I build out a flow or that I want to structure the data so that I can get easy answers. And they might be questions like this. How many episodes did an actor appear in? And not only just a single actor, but could I then group those into recurring actors or regular actors, so additional complexity. What was an actor's first episode? Or what episode did a character appear in last? Again, if it makes it relevant for you, think of employees clocking in and you wanna know when did they clock in first or when did they clock in last? Or when did a patient first come to the hospital and how long did they stay before they left and how many times did they come back? So all of those kind of questions. The old way in Tableau Prep, and I say old because Tableau Prep's only a year and a half old itself, but the old way looked something like this. I would take my, my data and I would create an aggregate step to get the number of episodes per actor. Then I would join it back on itself in the flow with a self-join so that I could get that value back at the row level. And then maybe at another step I could do some additional types of calculations. Now this way works just fine and it's kind of fun once you figure it out and you kind of feel kind of smart and hey look what I figured out. Uh, but all of a sudden you have all these triangles in your flow and people are wondering what, what are you doing? And if you wanted to answer more than one of those questions you'd have three or four different of these triangle shapes in your flow. So I was incredibly happy to discover a new way of solving these kinds of questions. Here's the new way. We'll go to uh, Tableau Prep. And along the way, I'll show off a couple of other features. So we'll connect to data, and I'll show off the ability to connect to cloud-based data. How many of you have wanted to connect to Google Sheets with Tableau Prep? All right, good news, you can now. And the way to do it is actually through Google Drive. So I can connect to any file on my Google Drive. It's going to authenticate in a browser. Oh yeah, we'll allow access. And so once I've uh, entered my credentials and allowed Tableau Prep to access Google Sheets and closed out the browser, then I get this window here to browse the contents of my Google Drive and anything on there that's data, including Google Sheets, I can now connect. Another feature that I'll uh, point out is this little navigator window. This one appeared in 2019.3. Uh, with, a, with a little flow like this, not too exciting, but when you get a really complex flow, this is a great way to be able to uh, drag and uh, navigate through that flow. It also has some zoom controls, which are really great. Uh, but there's an old feature, which I'm going to use now, because how many of you like that size on that screen? People in the back are shaking their heads. So I press the control key, hold it down, and I can use plus and minus to zoom everything in or out. And so that's another one of those little features that's been there for a while, but I didn't know about it until, until recently. All right, so here's my data set. I've got, uh, I've got episode order. I'm gonna look at that in a detail way. I've got the title of the episode, uh, the actor, and the character. And so one of my questions was, how many episodes did an actor appear in? 
Well, the old way of doing it would have been aggregate and self-join and all of that, but the new way is much easier. I just simply create a calculated field. We'll call it number of episodes per actor. And then just like I would have in Tableau Desktop, I can now create fixed level of detail calculations in prep. So a fixed level of detail at the level of actor. And I'm gonna do a distinct count of episode title. I might have thought to do like a sum of one or something like that, but it turns out that certain actors may have played uh, more than one role in an episode. So with this calculation, I now get the number of episodes per actor and it brings it back to the row level. So I can select any one of these, uh, any one of these actors and I can see how many, uh, how many episodes did they, uh, did they have. Um, yeah, a little bit hard to see on the highlighting there, but I could also select one and see that there are lots of actors who had a single episode. I can scroll down and I'll look at, uh, at how, which actor had 80 episodes. I'm gonna switch, here's another one of those new features, the ability to switch between looking at the profile pane or looking just at the uh, data grid itself. So with that 80 selected, I see that there is only one actor who played in every episode of the original Star Trek, and that's Leonard Nimoy who played Mr. Spock. Uh, William Shatner, Captain Kirk, he was in 79 of the episodes, but not the original pilot, The Cage, which Leonard Nimoy was. So I've got this number of episodes per actor, and I can do even more with it here. So I can create additional calculations. Uh, I might wanna know what the role was for an actor. So the actor role, that is, were they a regular, were they a one-time only kind of thing? So I could build out a calculation like this. If the number of episodes for the actor equals one, then they were one time. But if they were maybe less than five, then they were just occasional. And if they were maybe even up to 30 episodes, then they were recurring. And otherwise, if they were more than that, then they were a regular cast member. So I can build out additional logic in Tableau Prep. And I can do all of this in a single step instead of building out a flow to do all of this logic and those strange triangle shapes. Now I can do it right here and I can start to look at which, uh, which actors were regular or recurring or one time and I'm structuring the data and it's very much easier with that fixed level of detail calculation. The only other thing that I'll point out here in Tableau Prep uh, is a great new feature and I'm gonna use it to work on the episode title which I'm gonna drag over here so that we can look at it a little bit better. Notice that my episode title is all uppercase. I'd like it to be title case. So, uppercase letter for the first letter of each word, except for words like of, the, or a, unless it's the beginning of the, the uh, title. Now, Tableau Prep has some string functions built in. It even has some regular expression functions built in. So maybe I could come up with a calculation that's really complex to try to figure it out. But that would be really tough. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is use a new feature, a relatively new feature, which is, tab, which is Python and R script capabilities. So notice the ability to add a script step here. And when I do that, it's giving me a little warning because I haven't yet connected to the server. So I'll connect to my TabPy ser server. And there are instructions on Tableau's website about how to set this up and how to, uh, to get it to work. It's not hard, I'm not, a, I'm not a Python expert, but I was able to figure it out. So if you're a Python expert, you're gonna love this. Then I'm going to, uh, to look for my script file. 
here's my Python script. Let's take a look at it just for fun, not because we really care too much about what it does, except to point out that it, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call this function here to title case. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the, uh, the data set as a data frame object, and for every episode title, it's going to apply this function, which is going to turn it into title case. It's got a list of exceptions, and then it's going to loop through every word and make it, uh, make the first letter capital, unless it's one of the exception words. So a, a really nice Python script. I found it somewhere. I, I wish I could give credit, but I don't remember where. Uh, but I'll select that. And then the only other thing I need to do is tell it which function to actually call, so I'm going to uh, just tell it to use that title case function. Watch the episode title here as I press enter to tell it to use that function. And now everything is nicely title cased. Uh, the exception words, if they're at the beginning, they're still capital, but otherwise of the, of they are not capitalized, but everything else is. So that's, that's perfectly wonderful. So I'm loving the new features in Tableau Prep. Let's go on to something else. Parameter actions. Now these were released all the way back, I say all the way back, just a few months ago, Tableau 2019.2. But these are another one of those functions that are just a game-changing function. The idea is, is that if I have a view, I can now create an action that changes the value of a parameter. So if I click on a bar, or even hover on a bar, or click on the point in a scatter plot, I can assign a value to a parameter. So I click on this bar, and the value changes to Janus 6. I click on this bar and it changes it to X03. And you say, okay, well, I've, I've had actions before, but not like this, because think of all the things you can do with parameters. You can use them in calculations. And that means that you can change filters. In fact, you can even change the filter on the view that triggered the action. So you can have self-filtering views. You can change labels and titles and captions you can change any visual attribute that you want to. Place that calculated field that's based on the parameter value on size or color or shape. And uh, you can have all kinds of things changing throughout the entire workbook because parameters aren't limited to a single data source or a single view. They apply everywhere in your entire workbook. This allows you to do what-if analysis. So what if all the other dilithium production was compared to the selected planet. Uh, or is it higher or lower for everything else? Uh, if you have a timeline, now you can select a single point and you can see every other point in time related to that one. Is it higher, lower? What was the percent change? All kinds of what if analysis that's possible. You can move reference lines with parameter values. So as you're, as you're building out interaction, you can have those reference lines moving around. Uh, you can change filters and sets and the size of bins. The sky's the limit. You can also take the measure name. So if you're using measure names, measure values, take that and, and put the measure name into the parameter. So now you can know which measure someone's interested in, in understanding. And finally, uh, this one's kind of dangerous. Uh, but you could even use a parameter value in dynamic SQL. So now someone clicks a bar and the dynamic SQL that has a parameter embedded in it changes and it requeries the data and it changes everything. You could have a lot of fun with that or you could really mess something up. Uh, so new features are like that. Now, all of this could be put to great use in your organizations. You could, you could do what-if analysis. You can have all kinds of ways of interacting with the visas uh, and answering business questions, making key decisions. I looked at this uh, new feature and I thought, I want to play a game. I've been wanting to build Minesweeper in Tableau for a long time. 
but I couldn't ever figure out how to do it because there were, there were three things that I knew I needed. I knew I needed data. That's obvious, Tableau always needs data, but I could, I could find or generate data for, uh, for Minesweeper. But I needed to be able to, uh, to have an action that worked on the same view. So you click a square and it has to reveal whether it's a mine or, or whether it's next to a mine or whether it's just a blank square. Uh, there are some workarounds, but that's kind of hard. And most importantly, and this is the one I could never figure out, but I have to keep a history of clicking. So if I click on this square and then this square and then this square, I have to remember which ones I clicked on. So simply a filter doesn't work because I filter something out uh, and then I change the filter. Well, it didn't remember what was filtered before. So those last two were made a lot easier with parameter actions. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just give you a high level overview of how I created Minesweeper. It's not gonna be down in the details hopefully too much, uh, but not hopefully too high level either. Uh, and the goal is, is that you can look at this and it will spark ideas and creativity so that you'll think of, huh, if you can do that, then I could do something else. So the data itself I, I needed, uh, that was easy enough to find. I found this guy named Dan Q who had a random uh, Minesweeper generator and so I was able to just generate some, uh, some boards. I could tell it the number of columns, the number of rows, how many mines I wanted, and then I could copy that into Excel. Because I need, I need a little bit more than that for Tableau, so I could copy it in there. I, I color-coded it just to help myself think through the problem. I added some data to it, which would make it uh, something that I could use in Tableau. I knew I'd need to know the row and the column to, uh, to draw it and to keep track of, of the clicks. And I added the board number so that I could have lots of different boards in the data set. And then I realized that in the game of Minesweeper, there is this very curious phenomena. If you click on one of these blank, empty squares, it doesn't just reveal that square, it reveals all of these squares. And I had to think through, how could I generate data that would allow me to associate all of those squares? So I took that data set and I just numbered each, each blank section, or lettered it. I gave it A, B, C, D, and so on, and then, the squares around that, I also gave them letters. So now I knew which squares to reveal if you clicked on one of those Bs or one of those Cs. I had to clean up that data a little bit. That was great for me thinking through the problem, but it wasn't great to take into Tableau, but Tableau Prep allowed me to do that. Just pivoted it a little bit. I uh, duplicated the data with a top and a bottom so that I could draw the top is empty squares and allow the interactivity. And the bottom would be the mines and the, uh, and the numbers next to the mines. And then a few other calculations throughout until finally I had a data set like this. And this is the key because now I have a row per square per board uh, and then duplicated one for top and one for bottom. And if it's the top, then I've got the value that I'm going to give to the parameter. And if I give it an A, then everything that matches A is going to be revealed. If I give it just the uh, row and column, then only that square will be revealed. If I give it a mine, then all the mines get revealed. And so that was the, uh, that was the key to the data. But then this is how I used it in Tableau. I had a parameter a string that I could start to build out. And so if you click one of these, uh, the 1.10, then it appends that to the string and checks to see which one it should remove from the top layer, and it removes that revealing what's beneath. You click another square. And now that gets appended to the parameter, so not just changing the parameter value, but adding to it, and now that square also gets revealed. And so in this way, I could keep track of a history of everything that you had clicked. You click one of the Bs, and now all of the Bs that match get revealed. And so that was the basic idea behind Minesweeper. Who wants to see it in action? All right, so here it is. 
in Tableau itself. I'm not even going to put it in a pretty dashboard. I'm just going to play it right here in a view so that you can see this, this is Tableau. And we'll set the mood. Wow. All right, so then, if I want to play flags, I've got another parameter that builds out that string. pressure of being on stage. <laughs> All right. Well, that was the end of that one. I'll put this out on my blog in the next few weeks and actually publish it to Tableau Public so that you can enjoy playing it and download it and deconstruct it and see how it works. But the key was parameter actions, an amazing new feature that opens an entire world of possibility. Battleship, that was also me, yes. And so Battleship was one of those where I, if I'd had parameter actions, it would have been so easy. Instead, I had like 100 different parameters. It was awful. All right, so what do you do with these new features? Well, first of all, use them. So if you're able to, at your organization, get the latest version or even a version or two behind, check out what the new features were in that and use them. Here, for example, uh, map layers, uh, an incredible new feature, but I, I'll have to admit, I don't find myself using them near as much as I could or should. Uh, vector maps, an amazing feature. I need to use it more. Play with them, push the limits, see what you can do, let your imagination run wild. And so use, use them and play with them. And then provide feedback especially if you're part of that pre-release program, but even more so, uh, but, but even, even as you just use it, provide feedback to Tableau so that the developers know what you like, what you wish it could do that it doesn't currently do. Maybe, maybe a new feature breaks something. I had a, a blackjack game that I created, perfect for Vegas. Uh, Tableau uh, released a new feature that improved the efficiency, which was great for business and clients and horrible for my random number generator in blackjack. I didn't tell the developers that, they, they wouldn't have cared. But they will care when it's their customers and it's a true business need. And finally, submit new ideas. So I talked about the community forums. There is a section on there where you can add your own ideas. So as you use new features, you may think, this is great, but if it could do this, I'd love it even more. And so add that as a new idea, or uh, upvote other people's ideas to let the developers know what's important to you and where they should focus. You never know. You might be responsible for the next generation of Tableau. I think we've got a little bit of time for Q&A. All right, question over here. Will the pages and animation work on the server? So yes, I believe they will. Yes, good question. Yes. How did I append to the string? I should have anticipated that question. Let's go look real quick and see if I can remind myself how I did that. So you can see the, uh, the parameter string being built out here. What I did was I, I had a couple of calculations and I said, here's a, here's a string that gets appended to it. Uh, so, so the string to append was the original data and then if I added to it, I just, I just kept adding it unless it was a flag, so you can't click on the flags. Uh, so that's a great question, but it was a calculation to do that. And then that's what gets passed to the parameter the next time. And so each time I'm passing that new appended string to the parameter. All right, any other questions? 
This, uh, yes, one last question. How do you decide, oh, thank you. How do you decide whether to do those kind of calculations, LOD things in um, Tableau Prep rather than in, in the desktop? Oh, good, yeah, great question. So the question is, is I showed, you know, you might have the question of how many episodes per actor and how do you decide if you do that in Tableau Prep versus Tableau Desktop? A lot of it will depend on, on what you need to do. If it's something that you need to dynamically calculate and it's gonna change based on filters, uh, that's something to do in Tableau Desktop. If it's something that you fundamentally need to understand as part of your data, uh, like there, I, I, it's not gonna change. An actor appeared one time or many times and I wanted to add some additional information to my data set that labeled the actor, so a new dimension, uh, there's no reason not to do that in prep. So I'll do that in prep so that I can take the complexity out of Tableau, and that way when I publish the data set and somebody else uses it, or, or I'm just using it in Tableau, I don't have to worry about that complexity. It was a one-time thing and it's done. That was a great question. All right, this session will be repeated on Friday. There will be a rerun, so if you loved it that much, you can come back, or you can tell your friends that you just saw the most amazing session. And if you truly believe it was an amazing session, or even if you don't, please fill out the, uh, the survey. I'd love to see your feedback and hear how I could improve or what you'd like to know. All right, one. Oh, the question. Captain Picard or Captain Kirk? Who would use Tableau the most? I would have to say, I think it would be Picard. He seems much more analytical, much more willing to approach a problem and to think through the options. Captain Kirk would just punch his way through it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>